if we keep polluting, your water will someday look like this for drinking water. <laughs> Actually, this is coffee. Order before midnight and you too can have Turkish coffee in a bottle. This is just a very relaxed chance. Do you want barley? Or not? I'm okay. I'm okay. I hope we can hear. Do you see the needles moving? Are we talking? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, how am I going to start? Welcome. Thank you. Well, Glad you can make it today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. This is my show. Okay, we're back in Istanbul, and yet another guest has come over specially to talk with me. Uh, this yeah, and sitting with me here is Kurt Gedi, who's come over to Istanbul for a week from Los Angeles. Welcome. Thank you. Now, is come over from Los Angeles to London, you're going across the pond. Yes. If you come from Los Angeles to Istanbul, what are you coming across that? There's just the English Channel, okay. and then the rest of the way you're over land mass. Uh, and then when you got into Istanbul, maybe you touched on the Mediterranean. Yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. I don't think you've gone down. Marmaris Sea, Marmaris Sea, Black Sea is further north, okay. so you haven't quite crossed there. Thank you for the show. That's okay. I was actually up next to the. Oh yeah, yes, I was actually up by the Black Sea this morning. So really, and I come down. Uh, into the city to see. So it's kind of like good for you. It's great. Um, I have been begging <coughs> some people who we both know mm -hmm. to take me to a pool or anywhere to swim, and I was told there's nowhere safe to swim here. Is that because the person is so sweet that I'm with that they are afraid of melting, or is it, is it really there's no place safe to swim? There are some pools in Istanbul. Okay, but, but like this one. Like this one just here. Um, and I should have this one. The, uh, <laughs> this pool, right here, the new six pool. Who's talking about me? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're talking about uh, ship in the uh, camera prison. Yes, we, uh, we're going off camera as well. Yeah, yeah we're actually we're in, uh, right now we're at Six News, which is uh, one of my points. Now, what do you do here at Six? Uh, what I do, I'm producing some programs about Istanbul and doing voiceovers for news programs. Wow, impressive. And teaching English. And teaching English. So I heard, I've been reading yes. your book. Oh, and, and, so, and, and congratulations on, on, your, on your recent marriage. My recent marriage? Five years ago, six years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Yes. Time flies. Yes, it does. <laughs> Anyway, but congratulations, because I didn't say that earlier, so yeah. I'm still trying to get caught up with time here. <laughs> These things go round and round. Now, you and I met in Los Angeles, but you have no recollection of this. I'm just curious, do I have that type of presence that I, I'm forgettable that easily, or were there other altering conditions with so many people you were meeting? Well, I was, I was, obviously, <laughs> I was obviously so knocked out. Oh, okay. uh, on the occasion, I see. Um, and well, the I, jet lag from coming across a couple that's of That's right, and, and the the thirty hours. Th I think it took me thirty five hours to get across. What? Yes. I saw that flight where they give you like the fifteen hour layover somewhere, and I said, "No way, I'm not doing that." Because okay. I left at like five o'clock on Sunday and got here at eleven o'clock on Monday. Mm -hmm. Was that the direct flight? No, it was a two hour stop in Munich. Because there is now a direct flight from. Istanbul to LA uh, with Turkish Airlines. An extra bonus so you can listen to my documentary since you're flying over. You're telling me now? Yes, I am. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. I'll make sure the next time I'm coming over to do that. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's good enough. Ian, get it on the Tanzu too, so in case it can be there on the way back. Tanzu's got nice food. They do. They actually, I was impressed with their flights. Do you think they can sponsor this program? I think they should sponsor this program, <laughs> yeah. and I think maybe we could do um, a new program for them. Are you listening, guys? Uh, we could call it Four Corners, and we could take turns doing segments about the four corners of the world you could fly to in the world of Lufthansa. Okay. Because they're in 324 countries or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Now, this actually brings us into an interesting 
point about you, that you are always looking at opportunities once you Wow, that's a diplomatic way of putting it. Um, yes, I, uh, since childhood, uh, I've been blessed with an amazing life and an amazing career. And um, part of that was inspired by John Guerin. Mm -hmm. you know, he, um, 16 centuries ago, was uh, the uh, program director for ABC in Los Angeles. And I was growing up in northern Michigan in a very small town where there were more trees than people. And um, at age 10, I started in broadcasting um, because I was terrifying people when I was three going, could I have a cookie? And they were like looking around for who was this person with this voice because I haven't gone through puberty yet. Okay. And so I used to send John tapes and said to John, um, one day I called him up out of the blue at age 16 because I was ready to save the world and said, uh, John, I'm going to be in Chicago. Can I stop in and see you? And he granted me an appointment. And we went in and I was playing on my tape and he was listening. I thought I had John record my Decker's job that day. Mm -hmm. And he said, Kurt, I love your work. I'm not going to hire you today. Oh. And that's, you know, when you're coming up in the industry, a shot in the heart when you take that first bigger rejection. And uh, he said, but I'm going to do something for you. I'm setting me your tapes and you listen to direction and you keep improving. Someday I'm going to hire you. And I'm like, great. And he said, but I need you to do one thing. I'm like, okay, whatever, anything. And he said, if you will promise to always keep your mind open and when you see other people with talent, try and open the door. Don't push anybody through it, but try and open the door and be there. And it has nothing to do with you or what you can get out of the deal. If you'll do that, then I'll keep working for you. Easy request. Yeah, especially at age 16. And so, John kept his promise. John hired me at ABC in Dallas, ABC in Chicago, ABC in Los Angeles, CBS. John got me hired in probably over half a dozen jobs that I know of, and who knows how many others. And so, um, it's been a blessed career that um, I've been able to expand beyond just doing entertainment. I you now consult businesses um, around the planet in numerous industries. Um, and because I've always been out there being a self promoter, if you will, um, I've been able to meet people in every walk of life and have been blessed to be asked to be part of consulting or marketing or, or whatever. So, yeah, I do look for business opportunities. And a lot of times I'm even more blessed that they find me. Uh, so, I think part of that's just being able to That's um, very interesting because um, a couple of Recurring themes seem to be coming up in these conversations that I'm having with different voice artists. So really? One is that. Um, me. One is that there's very often someone, either a mentor or a parent, who right. has encouraged the, the individual in their early years. Um, and the other one is. Um, <laughs> The other recurring theme is that um, uh, I've just gone right out of my brain. So I know, it was a coffee that distracted was, you in this oversized water bottle for people listening to this podcast who have no clue what he was just talking about. Yeah, I like You know, those oversized containers, what are these, liters? Oh, 1.5 liters. This actually has been mostly coffee for the entire day. Sounds I like bought fire. this. What do you mean? <laughs> well, it's also, you know... Five in the morning, my time. Yeah, I know. Now. I keep close track on my computer. I have LA and New York Times. Do you? Computer, so yeah. I know where you are. I've been keeping close track that I haven't changed this watch and bought a phone or second for your work. So, we're kind of thinking things that one that there's been a person in their life that has, um, that has been showing them the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other one is that. Um, people who've gone out looking for opportunities and made it happen. Um, and I guess I'm very... I think both are true. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even a third one. Um, I have been very blessed that a lot of people who, who saw something in me gave me the opportunity and have opened doors for me and continue to open doors. Um, I also have been a really big self-promoter. Um, some people say to a fault. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, and I'm not losing a lot of sleep over that. Certainly, they still at least remember how to spell my name when they write a check or something that's the email, um, which I don't get a lot of those, actually, when I think about it. But also, Michael Jackson was amazingly talented. 
However, the reason he was so good is he did it all the time, over and over and over again. Take a look at anybody, tennis, sports, guitar players, heroes, Stephen Tyler, amazing. Now he's also a judge on, on American Idol. But he didn't get to American Idol by just one day breezing in a limousine. He played, he rehearsed, he had his days where he really struggled, as anyone does in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. um, don't give up before the miracle happens. Yeah. Because if you really stick to it and you believe in it, no matter how many no's you get, that's one step closer to a yes. I mean, look at Colonel Sanders. There would never have been a Kentucky Fried Chicken and some health people would say, that's probably a good <laughs> idea. But there wouldn't have been a, uh, a Kentucky Fried Chicken if he had taken no. Yeah. He took like, what, 999 no's before someone finally said, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put the money on for that. Um, would you be where you're sitting at right now today talking with me? Had you listened to one of those no's along the way? Absolutely. You're obviously driven to go to a foreign country, to be a teacher, Stories, voiceover. Oh, I, 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 um, I would like to say I see some similarities um, in maybe a little, say not as well accomplished as yourself, but I, I, I like to chase. I, I, I try and chase opportunities, and I, I'm actually sitting here. Uh, we're at, at Six News today. Yes, we are. And, and um, thank you for the invitation. Oh, it's, 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 such an it's honor. a pleasure to. So that's the help one of my colleagues here. Um, it's, it's a sector where we're helping each other. Um, um, so my colleague will be speaking right. to a little bit later. Right. I've done her a favor. Some people do me a favor in return another, another time. Sometimes the beauty of it is not about what we get out of it. No. It's what we can get out of it. It's in giving and we do what we see. Yeah. At least I do. Whenever no, no, I, I can so. help someone out, um, there are many times I'll do things for charity or for other people getting started or for small businesses. It's never about the money. It really is. If you focus on the money, then, then you get upset about it. Oh, money comes and money goes. People come and people go. If you're hung up in that details, right, we have this conversation at dinner last night. It's all, you get hung up in the details. They are only details. <laughs> if you get all wrapped up in that emotion, life can be a really a rough river coaster. Mm -hmm. This can be a beautiful place on earth or it can be a living hell. Mm -hmm. It's what we're making. We make our own opportunities, whether we want to believe that or not. We make our own disasters, whether we want to believe it or not. No, we have help. There are people who will be there to aid in our demise and our success. Give us a little shove and we'll fall in the pool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that can happen. However, it's it how you happen. get dried off when you do have those rainy days. Yeah. It's how you recover when you get sand in your eyes or um, you trip and stumble. Can you get back up again? Or do you lay there and wallow in? Oh, I landed in this horse mm. stuff, and mm -hmm. it's, it's an uncomfortable. Yeah, we don't play the shit on Really? No, no. Oh, dang! I'd have to edit it. I was going to say manure, but I didn't yeah. know if we could even go that far. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe English, but uh, I see. <laughs> yes. No shit. <laughs> Where did that come from? I'm sorry. <laughs> These voices in my head. Um, yes. That's a beautiful thing. Also, is don't limit yourself. I think a lot of times we have this, like the old days of broadcasting, where you took out the razor blade, you would cut the tape to edit things. We do this in our own minds, whether we realize it or not. We have a lot of self-editing, and then we also have everybody else's voice that's doing editing, and it's not a simple thing. It's a thing we allow to happen, and there are times I will stop people, not to be rude, but when they say something really negative to me, I'll say, no, that may be your story, but that's not mine. I don't need to take on someone else's anger or their negative energy. However, you do need to know where to draw the line from are you being abused in a situation. Now, I really don't want to do something you're going to make $40 million on for 50 cents. I don't know why, but I think they eliminated slavery, at least where I live now. Um, but some people are so desperate they will do it. There's no need to be desperate. Everything will happen in its own time, whether you believe it or not. It does. So I, I guess, um, like when you're following things on, on the conversation, many voiceover conversations here on the internet, on Facebook groups and voiceover, you're not, you're not seeing it. I'm sure they are, i got to be honest, I am so, so you're, busy. You're, you're, you're I, cutting I, yourself I, away from it. Honestly, no, it's not even I'm cutting myself away. I just, there's only so much bandwidth in a day. Okay. And I, you know, I'm probably right now of emails that I need to get caught up on only 3,000 pieces behind today. And, and that's not an exaggeration. And so anybody who's listening is going, oh, he had time for that interview, but he couldn't answer my email. Um, 
there's only so much time in the day. So I prioritize and I, I talk to people. I would rather talk than sit there and read a blog or whatever. And that works for a lot of people. For me, I really, the quickest way to get my attention is a phone call. Text message is like really low down. And for some people, I see them sitting in restaurants, whatever, and they're sitting with other people and they're busy texting. They're not even talking. It's like they're this losing the art of communication. That's a big problem in this restaurant. Everywhere. Los Angeles, I'm, they're going to have doctors who are going to get whole new jobs because of carpal tunnel mm -hmm. from people who are just using their thumbs to type. I remember when we used to type with all our fingers. Now people are, because the keyboards are so small, are typing with their thumbs. You can't lose the art of communication. Now with TiVo, we can fast forward through commercials. Okay, maybe you like commercials, maybe you don't. We actually make our money doing them, so please listen Don't. to a few of them. Our advertisers <laughs> like them, and so do we. Um, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm thank for God honest. for PlayStation. I remember sitting in a session with the people from Deutsch, Jason Allen, and those guys. Beautiful people, brilliant writers. And I had to say, rated T for teen, I think about 89 times. But you know what, for the amount of money I got paid for that 30 minutes, it was worth every time I said it. And if they needed another 89 today, I would break them out. Because sometimes it's about just going the extra step, the extra mile, and communicating. And how they did that, I put it up on YouTube, and those commercials have gotten tens of thousands of hits. Now, some of it is because of the novelty of PlayStation, absolutely. Um, but it's also the art of how they did those commercials that communicated. I hope we don't ever lose the point where we stop communicating and we fast forward and watch through everything we don't want to see because we'll, we'll stop learning. We need it once in a while to get on here or some other point of view of your show, your podcast. Well, this is um, how we learn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and actually, William's a great fan of PlayStation. Um, and one hand, unfortunately, but um, for us, it's a great communicator because we, we talk about the games as we're playing them. He's only five years old. And wow. living, growing up in Turkey, his, um, his English and his Turkish, are, I'm just astounded at how well you nice. can communicate. Nice. Um, and when he came here and saw the studio, and, you know, and we, we looked all the we went uh, the green room, the control room, the studio. Mm -hmm. I asked him, what's the most exciting thing? I'm expecting to say the teletext. And right. Kind of, like, I don't know if teletext doesn't mean anything better. But he didn't it's talk, really he didn't talk about... It's really a flashback. He didn't talk about... Type. He didn't... Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Anyway. Um, he didn't say it was the technology. I asked him what's the best thing. He said, the people, they're really cool. Wow. His exact words. How the nice. people, they're really cool. So, um, I'm very pleased that for him communication is important because in, in, in this business, that's everything, isn't it? If you have a connection with somebody, then you can do things. Well, think about it. I mean, some of your best jobs that you've gotten in your career, maybe it's true for you, maybe it's not for me. Some of the best jobs I've ever got in my career, yeah, talent did absolutely have something to do with it. I didn't get hired because of my good looks. All right, maybe it is. But part of it was relationships, a big part of it. Because let's face it, if somebody doesn't like you, they aren't really going to hire you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a rapport with someone. I've seen people get hired because they went to the same school together, yeah. or because somebody knew somebody who knew somebody, whatever. But relationships are vitally important, and now in our fast-paced world, and it really is a fast-paced world, when was the last time you picked up a the newspaper? Well, I need to assess the situation because... I know, but uh, when was oh, the last time? a long time ago. It wasn't this morning out there. Oh, no. It was My, years ago. Thank you. <laughs> Same for me. And I've worked in entertainment since childhood, and I've done news, and I've done hard news, and I've done undercover news, and that's a side that most people don't know about me. Um, but um, the reality is um, we don't pick up and read newspapers like we used to. Um, we now get on the internet, and we now fast forward through shows because we don't want to do this, or we flip around for weekend channels to surf through 500 channels, or I just got my new... <clears throat> we won't give the sponsor's name because they haven't paid you for the uh -huh. advertising it's time. Just somebody, you know, or AT&T or somewhere like that. Yeah. But I have, you know, I think like 5,000 plus channels now from around the world that I can have access through high bandwidth. And the reality is we're channel surfing so fast. Everything's speeding up. we got to give it to us now so we get it. Um, that relationships are going to become even more important. You're going to get 
lost in the shuffle and getting out there. You know, there are kids now who have websites. We're mm -hmm. promoting stuff on websites, and there's Facebook that's helped people to finally start to get on the internet, and we're reticent. We're, not everybody's there yet. I'm sure there are places in the outback, there are places where people are not on the internet. There are places you can't get on the internet because the bandwidth isn't there yet. But the reality is the more we get the world and faster bandwidth, and the more we communicate, the more we can open or close doors. Well, um, it's a tiny road. I was, I was having a Skype conversation this morning with Chuck Burke in Hawaii. Right. Um, and uh, actually, because our time zones are so disparate, so I think it's 13 hours behind me. Right. Um, because they're so disparate, it's very easy at the beginning or the end of the day for us to have a chat because it's our downtime. Exactly. And, um, so, <laughs> ironically, I'm more connected with somebody halfway around the world than I am with somebody next door, maybe. It's sometimes very true. It's very strange thing. And sometimes our better friends are ones we've made on Facebook or MySpace. Are they paying you for this? Facebook no. Or, okay. or, or through other different Not yet. modes. Not yet. Hello, can you hear us, uh, Zuckerberg? So uh, there are other ways now that we have developed friendships. And sometimes those friendships have become better relationships. And quite candidly, I wouldn't be sitting here today okay. if it wasn't for sites like and then, uh, no, let's say it. like the Moldalgo or Voices123 or, or Voices.com, Stephanie and those wonderful people there. Um, and I have been able to convert jobs to do union work. Um, I've been able to audition myself um, night and day if I want to um, for the practice um, because that's something you should never stop doing. I don't care if you're the top. 5% of your industry, odds are you're still doing it day in and day out, whether you're getting paid or you're practicing or rehearsing, because that's how you stay good at your, your skill. You don't keep throwing knives and one day you start hitting people wrong because you stop practicing. It's not a good idea. You should practice every day so you keep hitting the mark. That's my on problem. target. Okay. Yes, I, I, practice I, I, more. The knife throwing business just, uh, I, I, haven't, that, I, haven't got, I haven't got that down yet. Uh, that kind of pinpoint. Please have asked me to stop that. Yeah, have they? <laughs> few lost hearts over this yeah. one or other body parts um, but I because high. of that aim high you know don't expect to get every audition you take um, and aim high so you don't hit anybody in the forehead unless it's with a good voiceover pitch and it gets you the job uh, <laughs> but the reality is the world is going to get smaller and smaller I'm seeing more and more big companies of all I've seen auditions on these sites for MSNBC I've seen them for Procter & Gamble, for GE, for major companies who are still doing union or non-union work depending on what people are auditioning or working for. And I'm not here to judge either. Um, work is, is, is what you make it. But the reality is because of meeting people through these sites, I, I got to come here and, and say hello. And just as a wrap up, because I know you have another interview coming up in just a few short minutes. Really? Um, are they paying us? Is this sponsored? <laughs> um, just as a wrap-up, um, uh, one of the reasons you're here in Istanbul is because of a mutual friend of ours, as is yes. yes. um, As it, we were talking earlier about important people in our careers, and uh, on the first day I started doing voiceovers, um, I was talking about it. And his, wow, uh, his, your first day uh, doing voiceovers. And he's connected me with lots of wonderful people uh, over the years. Um, so I owe a lot to him, and, and you've, you've come over, I think, um, you were spending the week with, with him. And well, yeah, he needed his car washed and okay. he wanted the garage cleared okay. out and, uh, you know, some things like that. And so, no, uh, yes, I, I did come over and got his invitation to, to meet him in person. I had seen him many times with Darth Vader behind him, uh -huh. um, and if you've been in his office, you yeah, know what I'm speaking yeah. about. Um, and and uh, we have developed a, a wonderful relationship with him. Uh, you know, Because 
why shouldn't the cultures in the moment be there? The, the only distance uh, between us is the distance between us. And with today's technology, that distance is, hmm, how long does it take you to log in? Absolutely. Literally. I mean, I could be watching your television shows, or I did an appearance on the um, God They Say show at Virgin Radio a couple of mornings ago, and there were people in Los Angeles listening to the show when we did it. Um, amazing. You couldn't have done that 20 years ago. You know, I remember growing up in Northern Michigan listening to WLS that got to 38 states, and I thought that was huge when I was a kid. 38 states is nothing anymore. You can cover the world with one email or one website or one television broadcast and give people are open to receive it. Yeah. Sorry, it's just really great to It's there. One thing I do want to say, though, when you do send out stuff in self-promotion, maybe we should all come up with this new slug line at the bottom. Instead of sending back hate mail, if you really don't want it, just hit delete. Don't mark spam and start writing all kinds of nasty notes back and forth to each other. Just let go. And that's the same with a job and you do an audition. Don't get all hung up in that audition. Let go. Put it out there and move on to the next one. Absolutely. And don't get upset with the director because they didn't hire you or the producer or the ad agency. You start getting all caught up in that negative emotion. Because that same energy could be spent for good energy on your next audition that probably would have booked you five more jobs. Do you know what, what I do when somebody calls me and says, are you available for a job? If I don't get a callback, I I just show it waiting. Yeah, if, if the callback comes and it's a nice additional bonus surprise. Absolutely. If it doesn't come, I've already said next. So when it does come, it's, well, great. I've it actually very positive. some come back to me, true story, some come back to me that five months ago you auditioned for this. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to send me the updated copy? Oh, no, it's the same copy. That, okay. Uh, beautiful. Thank goodness for modern technology. I can go search my email and pull it up. I, what was the name of that? Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, but that's, a, that's part of the function of letting go. Yeah. Going on to the next one. Did I get hung up on you that? You have thing? so much more peace, don't you, if you do that? Oh. If, if you're going, oh, is the phone going to ring? Is the phone going to ring? Uh, why did they cancel it? Then you start getting screwed up and then you start a downward spiral. Anxiety and anger are overrated frustrations. Um, they're overrated emotions that we invest so much energy into and we get so little out of. We get ulcers, we get ill, we get things that just aren't really desirable. So, better to let go of it, just like an audition, let go of it. You know, hey, there have been some auditions where I went out and I hit the dashboard and I went, oh, God, I really blew that. And I did the better audition in the car on the way home. But in learning from that versus continuing to repeat the same insanity over and want different results, do the better audition in the booth next time. Maybe get there a little earlier and get the copy from the casting director and go outside and reverse it, reverse it, reverse it. But don't over-reverse it, too, because you're not going to get the job done, too. I think it's going to sound mechanical. The big thing that I have found that's been a challenge for me, um, and I've been doing this since childhood, so it's been at least you know two or three years now, um, is that uh, people today aren't really looking to hear that big announcer. There are still jobs for that, but a lot of times people are like, sound like the guy next door. Sound like, I've actually gone to take classes so I can learn how to sound like the guy next door. Because I grew up sounding like an announcer from some of the years mm -hmm. of broadcast. Or, you know, and so, um, you have to I, I learned that well, and also try to find new ways to find new ranges with my voice, because if I just go into my normal register, I can sound like an announcer talking without trying to. So now, it's finding ways to animate my voice and get more excited, and how can I sound like that guy that's maybe 18 years old? Well, part of that is putting a little more adrenaline and maybe raising the pitch. We all have the ability, if you know how to talk, you can probably do voiceover. It's just like the Michael Jackson story, working and perfecting and reversing it. Um, you're going to be amazing at um, as your career continues to grow because one, you're taking the time to talk with other people who have gone before you or who have been doing it a long time to learn from their successes. Boy, that's half I the think battle right there. I think it's so important to, mm -hmm. to listen to other people. We have to wrap up just now. I, I was going to say. No, 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 no. Oh, it's, okay. it's your. your um, uh, Nika is going to be, wait, going to be shouting at you. They have to go to the think. green room and they uh, have to put yeah, stuff on and things. Okay. Oh, oh, oh.
Okay. Oh, 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 oh. We have a presenter here who hasn't told his father yet that, um, yeah. that he wears makeup. So no. uh, <laughs> he could get a job for He's from the southern states makeup. as well. So oh, really? uh, yes, wow. so he needs to be careful. Um, but uh, we love Clint, so that's fine. Well, um, I, I actually haven't left television, and, and, and I'm getting more and more back into it. And we're actually shooting this because we're working on the television thing. So um, we'll talk to you about the rights and. Um, but but um, I think if you're open like you are to the learning, um, you've got so many models and my years ahead. Um, I and, believe and doing the podcast where people can hear you and hear what you're learning and share through that, you're actually helping so many. Uh, I, I believe that's the way. Um, and pushing up and I, I came here by accident. Well, I'll tell you that story another time. Really? Um, what was the name of this accident? No, I'm no, the name of the accident was I was misdirected past the front door of this building. I just happened to come in. Really? Yeah. Another wonderful it's, success story. It's uh, it's uh, had you not been misdirected. Of, yeah, I had the little old lady not told me it's down there when really it was in the opposite direction. Um, then I wouldn't be we wouldn't be sitting by this pool right now. Either. How fortuitous! Uh, yeah, it's it's very strange. So you have to, but you have to make those opportunities. Well, and, and also you have to believe that you do walk among angels, because if you yeah. don't believe that, then the miracles will never happen. If you believe that you are living in hell, you will be living in hell. And you know, when I came in here, if they'd said no to me, I wouldn't have lost anything, because I wasn't going to come here anyways. <laughs> Thank you! Wow, that's actually, there you go, you're open That's how I was thinking about it, you know, so, um, so it was a win-win situation. There was no loose there, because I didn't expect, you know, I would hope, of course I hoped for something, but I didn't expect something. Expectation and hope are slightly different things. Yes, sir, um, and, uh, but I was going to ask you why the voice of experience, but I think in all the experience you've just been sharing with us in, in the last few minutes, I think I have a very good idea now as to why it's the voice of experience. Thank you. Could, thank you so Actually, much. Actually, someone uh, gave me that title, and, and that's another story for another time, but um, uh, it just kind of stuck. Uh, well, it works. Yeah, it, does. it works. It does. Thanks so much. Blessing. I want to ask a parting shot. Okay. What do you want to do when you grow up? I don't want to grow up. I love that answer. I don't either. Growing up is so overrated. <laughs> Thank you.